I think it was two days ago. Usually, I go to Facebook to check the fastity of the pages. I don't go playing, I don't go answer questions generated by the system. But this time I had a question, I saw a question asking me, what is the best day of the year? And I didn't doubt, I just spontaneously answer, today is the best day of the year. To me, I don't know about you. That's a question for you to answer to yourself. But uh, after I answered, I said, why, you know, like, so spontaneously I said, today is the best day of the year. The past is over. Yesterday is no more. I don't have anything to do with it. And the future is not here tomorrow. If it comes tomorrow, I'll be saying today. So it doesn't exist either, right? We don't have anything to do in the, in the future. And when you get a lot of uh, depression, it's because you are lingering in the past, in yesterday. And when you are so anxious, it's waiting for the future that is not here. You don't even know if, you, you're not a psychic, you are not a fortune teller, and I don't even believe in that. All you have is today. And today, what are you creating today? Whatever you're thinking, whatever, you are imagining whatever you are feeling. Today is the day to think about how you want to live your next today. And I'm so happy, so proud to be here today. I always, I, every day, think about, sometimes think about how my past, how was I in the past, and a day like today, I'll be sitting in my home or doing any other thing and wondering, what is my purpose? What did I come to do in this world? Why am I here? And I was always waiting for something to happen. And I don't know if you have heard before, that was one time when I said, God, illuminate me or eliminate me because I was tired of being doing the same thing over and over again. Getting up, getting my son ready for school, coming back home, cooking, doing uh, things in the house or working to do the same thing next day. And I really was tired of that. I tried several different uh, careers, several were, uh, jobs, and none of them were satisfying. And it's like I told my brother once, if you want to go to the top of the ladder, you have to leave behind the step where you're standing. If you want to go up, you need to step up. And that's what I did when I first came a few years ago to one of the transformational weekend. I was sitting there just like some of you that came for the, just the weekend. And it was a really transformational weekend for me. I made a decision. I, I want this. And back then, I made a decision for everybody else but me. I wasn't thinking about me. And it was a pattern that all of those jobs that I did in the past, I was always thinking about somebody else but me. And when I was in uh, level two, I was still thinking about somebody else. But by level three, you guys here, you're going to be, it's, it's a total different story. It's like I, I, I read on one of the Facebook pages a lady that said that she thought she knew everything about fast EFT by level two. But by level three, she understood, she really understood what fast EFT is all about, what um, eutoptics is all about. It's about changing, not just Everybody else's life is about changing my life, changing my um, external world, depending on what I hold within. And I made sure that everything that I have in, I, I, I know I still have some works to do, but surely I see the outside world in a different way. And I thank this change to Robert, I think, because 
no, it's not just the system that he put together. It's him himself. He helped me. He, I, I don't know if, uh, how he see me, but I see him like, yeah, sure, my big brother. He kind of uh, metaphorically held my hand to bring me where I am today. I am in a totally different position, uh, physically, emotionally, um, everything. My, my world has go around, change totally from one point to another. And for that, I'm so proud and so happy to ask you to please welcome Robert Smith to the front. <laughs> Welcome. So exciting to be here, mostly. <laughs> it's kind of crazy being here in Oklahoma again. I noticed when I arrived the energy has shifted. <laughs> Thank you, Clara. Yeah, it's, it's really amazing to be a part of this. You know, it's, um, you know, of course, when I first started many years ago, oh God, wait, how many years ago do you say I started, you know? 15 years old, 14 years old, when it all was my search, you know. I said the biggest pivotal change in my life, I say, was the turning point for me was when I was 14. When I moved, when I went to work for my uncle in Oklahoma, in uh, Louisiana, Shreveport, Louisiana. And I just noticed something while I was there. It was peaceful. You know, I wasn't scared. I wasn't afraid to be beaten or yelled at, you know. Uh, not that my my home life was so bad it was now I remember it seemed to be okay but back then it didn't seem to be okay you know um, because I worked on it but the the interesting thing is having peace and I like having peace you know that's the reason why I do this work I want peace in my life I want peace in my relationships I want peace in my world I want peace in your life you know it's so cool when I you know I, I Andre I see Andre I say look at his face look at Andrea's face it's not the same face we started with you know or, or even Clara, or even you. I see changes, you know. It's amazing. Um, and the reason is, is I think it's, it's because, you know, like what she's saying, the past is over and doesn't exist. And you're using your past to screw up your present moment and you use it to ruin your future. Now, this is normal. This is what your brain does. And, of course, you know, we talk about memories. And, you know, today we're going to talk about pain. Tomorrow we're going to be doing, and today and tomorrow about pain, how, you're, how to address pain. What does pain come from, you know? And, why are we sick and why are you creating and experience what you experience? And it's because it's how the brain naturally works. And the weird thing is, is that sometimes, you know, you can have a loving, great relationship with your mother, your father. But, you know, it's like, it's like you're in a relationship with your dad. Your dad's a great dad, but then he explodes, you know, at one moment of explosion. Like he, you know, maybe he was drinking, maybe he had a bad day, and he explodes. And there's such a, 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 a zap of pain. All of a sudden, you create an idea that it's not safe. It's not safe to trust men. It's not safe to trust dad. It's not safe to be in relationships. And all of a sudden, you start carrying this 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 torch around you that I'm not safe and you and it's weird is that your mother picked you up from school every day for three years she picked you up every day she was on time even early but one day she wasn't and your brain remembers the one day not all the three years but that one day and you start creating a life from that and then you take this idea that it's not safe to be, you can't trust mom or you can't do this. And then we, our brain will use this one. And the reason is, is that your brain captures and holds on to the one that has the most emotional juice. And then you start creating a life around this one experience. Because why does it do that? Because the brain wants to keep you safe. It's a survival mechanism. That's all it does. It tries to keep you safe. So this painful memory has more emotional juice than the 3,000 days of, okay, mom's here to pick me up. This memory becomes the pivotal moment of your life. 
And then this becomes a part of your system. You know, we have, you know, we have our limbic system and we have the limbic system is right next to the survival part of the brain. Some will call it the reptilian brain. They call it the survival. When you're born into an environment and your dad blows up or your mom blows up or your brother tries to kill you, whatever it is that's in your life, your brain captures this, stores it, puts it in the background and uses it on you when you go to school. It uses it on you when you're in your relationship. The one you should trust and like, but then again, you never know when dad's going to blow up. You never know when your brother or your sister's going to try to kill you. So then you already got your fist up, always waiting for the fight. And your whole life, you've been waiting for the fight. And yet you've had so many days of love, joy, kindness, peacefulness, and pleasure. But this survival part of your brain says, I want to keep you safe. So then you get stuck in a loop. It's like, it's like the hamster on the wheel. The wheel of self-torment, the wheel of self-loathing, the wheel, wheel of self-pain. And then you jump off that wheel of self-loathing and self-pain and you go to another wheel that's even bigger because you want something better. It's like, it's like you're in the frying pan of self, self-loathing and torture and you jump out into the fire. So it's weird how we, our brains work. But the cool thing is, is you can change your brain. Isn't that right, Omar? Has anybody, has, have y'all met Omar yet? <laughs> we love Omar. Oh, have you actually seen that Omar has shifted? Do you remember? Thank you, Robert. <laughs> and thank you all the sessions you've been giving this guy. <laughs> He's a sharp kid. The sharpest one in that chair, I'll tell you that. 